Are you someone that wonders whether or not you should be taking iodine as a supplement? Well, in today's video, what I wanna do is share with you some remarkable science around iodine. So iodine is a crucial trace mm. element needed in small amounts, but is essential for your overall health. Now, iodine is essential for the production of thyroid hormones, which does regulate your metabolism, growth and development. Now it is mainly obtained through diet, particularly from iodized salt, seafood, dairy products, and certain vegetables, and deficiency can lead to various problems which we'll go into today. So first of all, how common is iodine deficiency? Iodine deficiency is surprisingly common, affecting 1.9 billion people globally. It's especially prevalent in regions with iodine poor soil, but even in developed countries, many people may not be getting enough iodine due to changes in diet and soil depletion. According to a study in Germany, the median daily iodine intake without taking into account the use of iodized salt in processed foods is around 75 micrograms for adults in Germany. This corresponds to half of the daily intake recommended by FSA of 150 micrograms and around 40% of the German health authority's reference value of 200 micrograms per day. A major factor is that many people aren't eating enough iodine rich foods like seafood and dairy products. Additionally, with more people cutting back on salt for health reasons, they miss out on iodized salt, which is a key source of iodine. In areas where the soil lacks iodine, Crops grown there also won't contain much, which is common in inland regions. Women who are pregnant or breastfeeding are also at higher risk of iodine deficiency due to the increased iodine needs for fetal and infant development. While this video does focus on iodine deficiency for adults, iodine deficiency is the most common preventable cause of intellectual disability in children. Now, what about iodine deficiency as it relates to hypothyroidism? This is not the same thing. Iodine is essential for thyroid hormone production and its deficiency can lead to hypothyroidism. Addressing iodine deficiency through increased consumption can restore normal thyroid function in such cases. For instance, a study treated patients with hypothyroidism due to iodine deficiency using daily powdered kelp supplements providing 200 to 400 micrograms of iodine which restored their thyroid function and normalized urinary iodine concentrations. However, if iodine intake is sufficient, hypothyroidism is often caused by factors unrelated to iodine deficiency, such as autoimmune thyroiditis. In these cases, increasing iodine consumption is unlikely to improve thyroid function and may even be harmful. Excessive iodine intake can disrupt thyroid hormone production and potentially worsen hypothyroidism. Therefore, it's crucial to determine the underlying cause of hypothyroidism before considering iodine supplementation. Consulting with a healthcare professional is essential to assess iodine status and develop an appropriate treatment plan tailored to individual needs. Now let's have a look at the potential symptoms associated with iodine deficiency in adults. Symptoms of moderate deficiency, particularly if causing hypothyroidism. First up, a person may experience fatigue, dry skin, weight gain, brain fog, and finally mood changes such as irritability and depression. For cases of extreme iodine deficiency symptoms may include goiter, which is an enlarged thyroid, severe hypothyroidism, which may be accompanied by weight gain, fatigue, and low metabolism. And there may also be symptoms of cognitive impairment. So how does iodine deficiency actually affect our energy levels and fatigue? Iodine plays a key role in thyroid health by supporting the production of thyroid hormones like T3 and T4, which regulate metabolism, energy, and mood. Without enough iodine, your thyroid is less able to function properly, potentially leading to symptoms like fatigue, weight gain, and even depression. Brain fog and fatigue are common symptoms of hypothyroidism. And according to this study, around 80% of participants experiencing brain fog experience it frequently. Now, how does iodine deficiency impact our cognitive function? As mentioned before, iodine deficiency is the leading cause of preventable intellectual disability in children, but what about adults? A study of 10,217 participants aged 60 and older found that iodized salt intake was associated with a reduced risk of cognitive impairment. Participants consuming non-iodized salt 
had a 23.9% prevalence of cognitive impairment, which was significantly higher than that among participants consuming iodized salt, 14.0%, or mixed salt, 18.1%. However, there was some differences in the samples. For example, the non-iodized salt group had lower literacy levels. In an unpublished thesis, the author found no difference in a sample of adults who supplemented with iodine for 32 weeks in cognitive measures, however noted that non-compliance was high for the study. Another study coming out of Australia found there was no relationship between iodine levels and cognitive functioning in a sample of older adults. From this, it seems there is mixed evidence about how iodine is associated with cognitive functioning. However, these studies largely analyze participants with mild iodine deficiency rather than those with severe deficiencies. Now, what about how iodine could potentially impact our overall mood state? This study examined the relationship between iodine intake and perinatal emotional distress and depression in a mild to moderately iodine deficient population using data from 67,812 women in the Norwegian mother, father, and child cohort study. Findings suggest that low dietary iodine intake below approximately 100 and 150 micrograms per day was linked to higher emotional distress and a depression risk during pregnancy and postpartum, interestingly, iodine supplement use was unexpectedly associated with increased emotional distress in pregnancy. However, this finding has various explanations, such as women with emotional distress being more likely to use supplements. And additionally, the authors note that the use of supplements in this group tended to be intermittent or for a short time, so they may not have had the chance to experience benefits. Additionally, environmental iodine deficiency is the most common cause of all thyroid disorders, including hypothyroidism. But in areas of iodine sufficiency, Hashimoto's disease, chronic autoimmune thyroiditis, is the most common cause of thyroid failure, and hypothyroidism is associated with depression. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may want to check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba Bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. Now, does being deficient in iodine actually potentially make you gain weight, specifically fat? Let's see below. This review article provides a great overview of how iodine status is linked to weight. Iodine and obesity. Studies show that higher urinary iodine concentration is linked to reduced central obesity and iodine supplementation can reduce fat mass and waist circumference. Though some studies report positive associations between iodine concentration and obesity, particularly in Colombian women. Iodine and hyperglycemia. A U-shaped curve was found between urinary iodine concentration and diabetes prevalence with some studies indicating higher iodine levels are associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes, while others suggest iodine supplementation may lower blood glucose levels, particularly in pregnant women. Iodine and hypertension. A U-shaped relationship between urinary iodine concentration and hypertension was observed with higher blood pressure in iodine sufficient and iodine excess areas and iodine deficiency being linked to preeclampsia. However, seaweed intake was found to reduce blood pressure in hypertensive individuals, iodine and dyslipidemia. Low urinary iodine concentration is associated with higher cholesterol levels, but iodine supplementation and seaweed intake can reduce hypercholesterolemia and lower low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, though some studies suggest a U-shaped or inverted U-shaped relationship between iodine and dyslipidemia. Basically, this review finds that the sweet spot for iodine is right around the daily recommended target of 150 micrograms per day for adults. Now, here are some other benefits of iodine. While many people think iodine is essential for thyroid functioning, there are other benefits which many people won't have heard of which are detailed in this article. Antioxidant. It helps protect cells from damage by neutralizing harmful free radicals, which can harm cell membranes, proteins, and DNA. It also boosts the activity of enzymes that fight damage and helps regulate inflammation. Cell growth control. Iodine can help to prevent excessive cell growth, help cells mature, or trigger cell death when needed. 
It does this by affecting energy production in the mitochondria and interacting with certain receptors in the body. Immune system regulation. Iodine helps control the immune response by directly influencing certain immune cells. Thyroid hormones. Iodine is a key part of the hormones produced by the thyroid, which are important for regulating metabolism and other bodily functions. Importantly, much more research is needed to determine appropriate dosages for these benefits and excessive iodine consumption is not recommended. Now, I do want to mention the best and worst forms of iodine supplementation. Now, bear in mind, we need to be careful if we're going to be selecting a supplement that does contain iodine. Now, obviously, it's in very small amounts. We're looking at the microgram level, which is very difficult for supplement manufacturers to actually perfect into a capsule. Now, what I'm not a big fan of is high doses of iodine. We're talking like 500 to 500 micrograms to 1,000 micrograms per day. That's too high for most people. Um, typically, we want to see it around 250 to 400 micrograms. Now, bear in mind that I would prefer that we consume iodine through seaweed. And I always advise through seaweed and seafood consumption. If that's not possible, then a low-dose iodine supplementation can potentially work well as long as it's not overdosed. So nothing beyond, you know, very high dosages. So here we can see the iodine RDIs developed by the Food and Nutrition Board in the US. We can see 19 plus years of age. We need 150 micrograms per day um, for iodine. And we can see here the iodine rich sources. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can see that bread that's enriched with iodine is not, even though it's high, it's actually not the best form of iodine. They actually use a, a really poor form. Ideally, we wanna be using a seaweed um, or seafood like cod, and even oysters. So I'd say cod, seaweed, and oysters are probably your best bet. And then milk is also a good source. Now, excessive iodine warning. This is something you guys need to remember. Excessive iodine intake is rare and hard to define, but a urinary iodine concentration greater than 299 micrograms per liter may suggest excess levels. In the US, the Institute of Medicine sets the tolerable upper limit for iodine at 1100 micrograms per day for adults including pregnant and lactating women. While excess iodine is less common than iodine deficiency, it has been linked to health issues like hypothyroidism, autoimmune thyroid disease, and papillary thyroid cancer. In healthy adults, excessive iodine can reduce thyroid hormone production, triggering increased TSH stimulation, hypothyroidism, and goiter. In iodine deficient populations, sudden high iodine intake can cause iodine-induced hypothyroidism, especially in older individuals with nodular goiter. Cases of excess iodine intake have been noted in Japan from seaweed and Chile due to over-iodized salt and environmental iodine. While excessive iodine is a limited issue, maintaining proper iodine intake is crucial for health. So be very careful if you decide to supplement iodine and ideally assess iodine levels in conjunction with a doctor. Fascinatingly, there is some evidence to suggest that different races react to iodine differently. In Japan, where iodine-rich seaweed is a common part of the diet, the average iodine intake is about 1.2 milligrams per day, with some individuals consuming even more. Despite this high intake, Japan has not seen a significant increase in thyroid disorders, which suggests that the population's thyroids have adapted to higher iodine levels. However, in certain regions like Hokkaido, Japan, where iodine intake was exceptionally high, up to 20 milligrams per day, conditions like endemic coastal goiter were observed, indicating that excessively high iodine can still cause thyroid issues. After the iodization of table salt, Denmark saw a reduction in goiter and hypothyroidism cases, but a slight increase in hypothyroidism. This suggests that increasing iodine intake can reduce iodine deficiency disorders, but exceeding certain thresholds may increase the risk of thyroid diseases. Despite iodine being added to salts in China, the prevalence of hypothyroidism remained stable two decades later, indicating that the long-term effects of iodine supplementation may vary across populations. And so my final thoughts are that iodine isn't something you want to have in very high amounts or very low amounts. There is always a sweet spot as with many of these minerals and elements. 
And deficiency is a key driver of hypothyroidism. So that could lead to weight gain, fatigue, brain fog, and poor hormone status. So it's more important to maintain a balanced diet where you can ingest enough iodine. So prioritizing foods like seaweed, cod, oysters, um, and other seafood. So that pretty much wraps up today's video on iodine. Please leave your comments down below. As always, thanks so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.